And a little bit further, we're going to go a little bit further in this passage. You're like, oh, I think we've heard this before. Um, yes, I'm going to continue on with start today. Uh, remember, I said there was 154 verses. And, and, and I just feel like we need to go a little bit deeper in this. And, and actually a little bit more deeper in Second Chronicles 7, uh, verse 14. I want you to check this out. Um, if my people who are called by my name, I, I, you can get there while I'm reading this, because I know where you, you know where it's at. So if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins, heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears will attend to their prayer that is made in this place. I love that. Now, now let's just take it a little adventure and go a little bit further. It says, For now I have chosen and consecrated this house that my name may be there forever. Yeah. So if you, you go a little bit further, it expands it a little bit. It doesn't, it sets the time frame forever. It is if we, we are his people, we humble ourselves, we seek his face, we, we pray for our land, we you know, all this stuff, and we consecrate this, and it's in this place, it's forever. Um, it goes on, and my eyes and my heart will be there for how long? For all time. 17, and as for you, if you walk before me as David your father has walked, doing according to all that I have commanded you, and keep my statutes and my rules, then I will establish your royal throne as I, as, a, as I covenant with David, your father, saying, you shall not lack a man to rule Israel. Okay, I think that's really cool. But verse 19, shh, Siri. <laughs> but if you turn aside or forsake my statute and my commandments, then I, I have set before you and go and serve and... and, and I set before you and go and serve other gods and worship them. Then, verse 20, then I will pluck you up in my land and I have given you and this house that I have concentrated for my name, I will cast you out of my sight. I will make it a proverb and a byword among all people. So here's the deal. If we don't set course and be people of prayer, and we stay according to his word, according to his, what he's called us to be. And if we don't live according to his statutes, according to what he's commanded us to do, um, he could live, leave this place. It's kind of a warning. Yeah. No, no, it's not kind of. It's a straight up warning for us. Yeah. As, I, as I was praying and as I believe that, we better be careful. Amen? Amen. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So if you... I think it's so important that we grasp that because if we're serious about prayer, we, we want to see healing and we want to see all this happen and we take prayer serious, we also have to look at the other side. If we're going to believe for healing, we're going to believe for protection, we're going to believe for dedication and we take prayer to the full extent, then we also need to remember that we have to follow the statutes of the word of God. The full word of God, not what we choose and pick out and choose. The full word, Genesis to Revelation. Come on, that will preach. Yes. See, too many times people go, well, I don't like that part or I don't like this portion. The full word of God, amen? amen. So let's jump in this a little bit further. I ended with the Lord's Prayer this morning. Matthew 21, 13, it says, Hugh said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. A house of prayer. I love that. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive it if you have faith. That is Matthew 21, 12, 20, 21, 22. Here's the deal, though. It's, we get this, some, some religions get this messed up. Prosperity gets this messed up. The prosperity religion, 
They think it's all about money. It's not all about money. It's about believing God will take care of what we need. We have faith believing God will take care of it. Amen? Amen. It's not us sending in a million dollars to so-and-so so they give us a little prayer cloth. It's believing God is faithful and we're faithful to him as well. Amen? Amen. Mark 9, 29, and he said to them, this cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. Someone, someone stopped me at the day of, National Day of Prayer and asked me all these questions about, do you believe in spiritual warfare? Yes. Anybody believe in spiritual warfare? Yes. Okay. We, we believe in spiritual warfare. So this person was from another, which was kind of awkward because this person was asking me about spiritual warfare and they were from another church. And they were asking in, in front of one of their spiritual leaders. Awkward. And so I says, yes, I believe in spiritual warfare. Do you, do you believe in that people can be demon-possessed? Yes. Okay. Do you, do you believe that you can pray a demon out of person? Yes. Yep. And, and so they said, have you ever done that? Yes. Good, you're the person I need to talk to. Okay. <laughs> do you want me to pray for you right now? Or I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we started on this conversation, and I said, and I, I, I know who, who this person's leader is, and I was like, but you have a great spiritual leader. But see, here's the deal is when the couple times that I've been a part of that kind of prayer is um, I had taken spiritual authority. But this other time is our children's pastor in Burlington, Iowa, called me up on my birthday. I will never forget this. And he called me up and I'm resting on my birthday. I like my birthday. Um, and I'm sitting there um, sleeping, probably eating cookies and sleeping mm -hmm. with a glass of milk. And watching a movie. And he calls me up and says, uh, PT, will you, I have this guy in the, in the foyer and I need your help. And I says, so what's going on? He describes the situation. I says, so what are you going to do about that? And this guy was 6'7", my children's pastor, the children's pastor. And he says, well, I don't know what to do. I says, well, you need to begin to pray. He says, I need you to come over now. I says, it's my birthday. I don't deal with demons on my birthday. It's my birthday. And so I says, well, let me get dressed because I was in my, probably my shorts and a grubby t-shirt. And I says, I'll be over in a minute. By the time I got over there, he had dragged this guy in the sanctuary. And he's frothing at the mouth. And, and I'm like, okay. I says, you have now taken, you have literally taken spiritual authority to the children's pastor. I'm your backup now. And he goes, oh, so you can't take over now? I says, nope. Once you take spiritual authority, you're on point. That person that comes in after is your backup. Why is that? Because now you're, you're the point person. You're the one that takes the spiritual authority. And you have prayer warriors that are surrounding the situation. You always have to have backup. You never go in alone. It's so important. Why is that? Because you have to be strong and you have to have spiritual backup. I've been in dark places in other countries and you always have backup. I don't care. You always have prayer warriors praying for you as you're going in. Anybody understand that? So it's, it's so important. So it took, it took pretty much all my birthday for this. And uh, the guy looked at me several times, cussed me out several times. And I just looked at him and says, what? What you going to do? And the guy kept praying. You know, the children's pastor kept praying, and eventually the guy calmed down, and he looked at me and says, I feel a lot better now, the guy that we were praying for. And he walked out. And the children's pastor sat down on the, on the altar and goes, 
That was hard. I says, then you should have waited. But you were too busy dragging the guy into the sanctuary. <laughs> There's, you know, the very fact. And it's not, it's not to glorify it, but it does happen because we live in such a depraved world. Now, I'm not saying I'm a demon hunter. I'm saying that it happens and you have to be prepared. Because the very fact is um, that it, nothing, you can't just say, hey, I'm looking for a demon, I'm going to drive it out. It has to be done in prayer, right? Yes. I've prayed over houses that people says, hey, will you come and pray over houses? I love doing that. I, I've done it several times. People go, can you pray over houses? <laughs> um, uh, another children's pastor in Burlington, Iowa, this is another children's pastor, is my pastor goes, hey, will you come pray over this house, this, this trailer home? It was in the, the d- decrepit part of the home. This is a funny, by the way. And, and so we're sitting there and we walk in this house and he was uh, just a really scaredy cat children's pastor. And, and so I am I love praying over homes and we're in this dirty home and we're praying over and, and the people are going, we've heard stuff. And it's probably a raccoon or something, but it could be something other. And so I'm praying through the house and I notice behind a water heater, there's a hole in the floor that's big enough for a person. Yeah. If you know anything about me, I jumped in that hole. And so as he came praying, because we pray over the whole house, mostly in the bathroom as well. And so I'm hiding behind the bathroom in the hole. And as he comes in praying, and and Pastor Dennis was praying, and as he came around and I went, and he went, (laughs) and he ran out the door of that mobile home into the van and he just sat there <laughs> and, and I finished praying over the home and, and the people weren't there and I got in the van and I said are you okay Pastor Dennis he says don't you ever <laughs> do that again <laughs> and, and so you can't praying over houses praying over stuff um, I'm not afraid of the enemy because of who lives in me I don't have to be afraid. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Amen? Yes. So, praise the Lord. All right. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty four 24 says, Therefore I will tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe it, then you will receive it, and it will be yours. Um, there's another prosperity thing. People take that and stretch it all over the place. Um, Acts, one of our favorite books in the Bible as, as Pentecostal believers. Acts 1-4, all these were in one accord. What kind of car did they drive in? One accord. An accord. <laughs> were devoting themselves in prayer together with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus and brother. They were in one accord. Why? Where was prayer happening? A prayer meeting was taking place. Amen? Amen. Yes. A fellowship of believers. And they devoted themselves to apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and prayers. Mm -hmm. Prayer meetings need to take place. Prayer times need to happen. Mm -hmm. We think it's just like, oh, we don't want to give up another night. Prayer meetings should take place. Whether it's we we take a service of the week, we take a, a Sunday night and we begin to pray. We need to have times of prayer. Prayer should be something in our life. Whether it's we, we, how many guys have set your three times a prayer on your phones? Everyone's like going, I haven't done it yet. Do it. Yeah, are you guys waiting until it starts tomorrow at seven? <laughs> a lame beggar is healed in Acts 3 1. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, to pray, and someone got healed. Acts 6, 4, but we were devoted ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Prayer and ministry of the word. Acts 10, 4, and he stared at him in terror and said, what is it, Lord? And he said to him, 
your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. I love it. Acts 12, 5. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnestly prayer, pray for him was made to God by the church. Here's the deal is what we pray for our missionaries, we pray for the people that we pray for the people that is in jail now. We pray for the prodigals. We pray for the people that are far off. We pray because it still meets the needs. Amen? You pray for a missionary. You get a sense in your spirit that they need prayer as they're out on the, on the grounds. Why? Because it will make a difference. There's a story that there was a missionary out in, in, in Africa, I believe, and they were in a hut and they were being surrounded by uh, warriors, and all of a sudden there was angels behind the warriors because the church was praying. It's so important that we are sensitive to the spirit that God directs. If you feel that sense that there is a need in your heart and you feel a sense in your spirit that one of our missionaries is at need and they need prayer covering, call everyone up and say, we need to pray for our missionaries now. Why do we need to call a prayer meeting? We can call a prayer meeting. Everyone to the church now, we need to pray for our missionary right now. Amen. Prayer is important. Hallelujah. Romans 1.10, always in my prayers, asking that somehow by God's will, I may now at last succeed in coming to you. Always ask God for God's will. Amen? Amen? Sometimes we try to do it in our own will. Always ask according to God's will. Romans 12, 12. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. Rejoice in hope. That's easy, right? Be patient in tribulation. Not so easy. Be constant in prayer. So rejoice always in hope. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. That's how you're going to get through all of this. Be constant in prayer. Hallelujah. I love the Bible, don't you? Yes. Yes. 2 Corinthians 1.11 you, you, you also must help us by prayer so that many will give thanks on our behalf for the blessing granted us through the prayers of many. Praying for one another is so key. Why did I start putting the, prayer, the three by five cards in the windows? So that we can take prayer requests. It's so important to start using those. I do want to order prayer cards that says prayer requests. But you know what? It's, we can do three by five cards. They're a whole lot cheaper. But... And they have lines on them, right? And you guys know how to write. And so you can put my prayer request, and if you put a mark on it, that means it's confidential. I think we can do that, right? So I can get like a 1000 of them for a buck. Or I can get like fifty for like $5,000 from Amazon. Okay. That says your prayer request. All right. Um, Ephesians 6.18. Praying at all times in the spirit with all prayers and supplication to, to that end. Keep alert with all perseverance. Make supplication for all the saints. This is a key verse for us. Praying at all times in the spirit. What does that mean? You can literally pray all the time. So I gave you three times you can pray during the day. Seven, noon, and 8 o'clock, right? Specific things that we can pray. But we can also pray all the time. Not when things go bad. Oh, man. Or, <laughs> Jesus help me right now. No, pray all the time. I mean, you think about it. You can pray through school. You can pray at work. You, you don't even have to say anything. The Lord knows, right? My kids, my family prays while I'm driving. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> to, the, to the end, keep alert with all perseverance. 
Why you pray? Walking past people in the store. Pray for them. Pray for them, especially if they have little kids. Calm that child down. Because you know the, the mom's about ready to go crazy. You know, pray for them. Pray always. Philippians 1 forces this. Always in every prayer of mine, for you are all making my prayer with joy. Pray with joy. Have you ever... <laughs> think about somebody who sucked lemons and pray. God, you're awesome. Or you just had a bad day and you start praying like, like crabby prayers. <laughs> ever prayed crabby prayers? Yeah. Man, how does that make you feel after you get through your crabby prayers? Never. <laughs> I'm like, crabby cakes. You know, I love getting up in the morning and I, I pray. It gets me through and it gets me up and it gets me going. And all of a sudden, my joy, you know, joy in the morning, right? It gets you going. I love prayer. Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made, to, be made known to God. Do not be anxious about anything. How difficult is that every one of us, right? We want it done right now. But in everything, prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, pray for what you need. Pray for your prayer requests and then thank God for it. Whenever it happens, continue to thank God for it. God, I know this is going to happen. Thank you, God. I love prayer walking. I, I'll walk my prayer walk three miles and I'll be like, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. I know it's going to be a good day. I don't know what the day is going to look like, but I'm going to thank God for it anyways. Right? Praise the Lord for it, because God is in control of our days. And if something bad happens that day, thank Him for it. Mm. What? Thank Him for it, because there's a reason something happened, and praise Him for it anyways. And then pray for that situation, and then thank Him for that. You're like, you just went to the wackadoodle side of the world. No. Pray without ceasing. Do not be anxious, but in everything, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you don't get what I'm talking about today, I'm talking about prayer. <laughs> We're talking about starting today. <laughs> if you don't start praying really intensely by the time we get done here, I don't know what's going to happen. All right. 1 Timothy 2.1. First of all, then I urge that supplication, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. For every single person. I mean, everybody. So, supplication, prayers, intercession, thanksgiving be made for all people. Everyone. How exciting is that? Yeah. That's like a bona fide, or, uh, uh, I can't even think the word I was thinking in my head, but it didn't come out, so don't worry about it. It's okay. It was, it was a good word. It just stopped right in my brain. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Here's one for you. James 5.13. Is any among you suffering? Let him pray. Yes. Is anyone cheerful? No. Let him sing praise. No. Okay. So if you're suffering, pray. <clears throat> if you're cheerful, you better sing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We should be excited or praying. One of the two. James 5.15 says, And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Mm -hmm. 
James 5, 16, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person has great power as it is working. That's a hard one. Confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. We need to pray for one another. In our church, we lay hands on one another, not around their neck. Mm-hmm. Never mind. Anyways, there's a thought that stopped. Um, the very fact is praying for one another and, and confessing, asking forgiveness for one another, and, and just really loving one another, united church, watching what God does, the healing that takes place, but also the healing and not only internally, uh, corporately, but also physically, what takes place. It happens. God is good. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. God is so good. You guys almost yeah. went down to 154 verses. <laughs> First Peter 4, 7, the The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled, sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Be able to pray focused. And then there's several in Revelation that you can look through. But as you begin to think about prayer, as you begin to focus on prayer, Prayer is just so important for the health of you, the health of our church, the health of even our country. Yes, that's right. We need to start today. That's right. And as I was sitting in, in district council and I was sitting and the Lord just kept speaking to me about just that, those two words, start today. It used to be uh, an old commercial that used to say, Oh, I can do it tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And it says, why put off tomorrow what you can do today? I think it used to be a Morton Salt commercial. I know. You guys don't remember those because you're not that old. I remember that. The very fact is, we need to be that church that is known to be a praying church. A church of prayer. A church that focuses on prayer. That when someone brings a prayer request, we don't hinder or hold back. We pray. We seek God's face. Whether it's a Tuesday night, we put it on our calendar. And I know, I'm the worst of that to be here because always... There's, there's a meeting that I have to be at. I know. And, and, and so I commend the, the two ladies that show up. But here's the deal is. Purpose in your heart. To pray. To pray. We need to be that church. Because I'll tell you what's going to happen. God's going to grow this church because of it. Because people who are healed, set free, delivered because of prayer, they're going to be drawn to the heartbeat of God because the heartbeat of God is a prayer. Why? Because 2 Chronicles 7.14. This is the place. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for tonight. I pray that, Lord, that you just continue to speak to us that you continue to challenge us, and Lord, that we may be those people, those people, that will humble themselves, seek your face, and pray. Lord, we thank you so much. I thank you for this church. I thank you for each person. I pray that you bless them as they're a blessing to me. And Lord, may we seek you with all our hearts, mind, and spirit. Lord, we love you. In your name, amen. Amen.